Tape rolls in five, four. It's time once again for another episode of Blame It On Bucket. Not too shabby. Oh, hello, boys. Hey, Mom. Hello, this is Beaver. May I say you look as pretty as ever? You're such a charmer, Freddy. That's not what Miss Young calls them. Aren't you supposed to be getting here in a bit? Oh, yeah, right. Be back in a flash, Creeper. Don't mind me, Freddy. The only chance he has for getting to first base is on the air. What's that intoxicating perfume you're wearing? Jim, would you like a little nap? Oh, man, would I? Honey, I. I was expecting an after work martini. I thought you liked it dirty, eh, <laughs> This sketch isn't working. I know. It's stalling. I know. It's not funny. I know. You're wrong! Oh, am I? That's unfortunate. Sorry it took me so long to find my mitt. It was buried under a pile of bad jokes. What? <laughs> Trying to save the sketch? What's wrong with the sketch? It isn't funny. I think it's funny. Of course you think it's funny. You wrote it. Rewrote it. These guys think it's funny. Good stuff. It has its moments. Hedonism is always hilarious. Klumkowski? No, Klumkowski thinks it's funny. It's Peggy, and I think... Joyce and Joey think it's funny. It wouldn't be in the show if it wasn't fun. It's in the show because we have four and a half minutes to fill. Then fill it with something funny. It is funny. Everyone thinks so. Not everyone. Well, you know who does think it's funny? Dr. Corey thinks it's funny. And thought, since Dr. Corey is our faculty advisor, that's all that matters. What does Dr. Corey know about comedy? Her PhD is in medieval literature, and we all know what a hoop that can be. I don't know. Chaucer had his moments. Come on. The Miller's Tale? Absolutely thinks he's kissing Alice and he's actually kissing her butt. I knew it. Network censors don't have doctorates to do. They have standards. We're not dealing with network censors. We're dealing with cable access. And there are still standards that we have to follow. We're a campus text. Campus sketch comedy show, and we have no standards. Standards and practices are there to protect the network or station from lawsuits from individuals who feel like their copyrighted work has been infringed upon. It's there to make sure we don't infer with the lines of the FCC. And more importantly, the SP hold us accountable if we don't need sponsors. Sponsors? We run a PSA for Mid Michigan Chemical Lesson Home. Uh, right after the Drex restaurant spot, which reminds me. Drex is providing sandwiches for tonight's taping. I need someone to pick up the food. Uh, They're great. Ooh. Great. I mean, that's why Dr. Corey is our s and guy. Free food. <laughs> Maybe she should stop by and watch us sometime. Uh, Joey and I will meet her beforehand to go over the scripts. Is that at the Drex salad bar? You may have had a meal or two comps. Must be nice. Hey, we're getting free sandwiches, aren't we? Um, I'll call and I'll see if they deliver. Hold on, Chris and I will now. <laughs> really? Thank you. Wait, who will man the camera? Oh, uh, yeah, we're not saving right now. Don't forget, you and John took the TV production. Yeah, hold on, you're acceptable. Let's just go. Besides, I'm trying to argue about sensors and X and P. Look, all I'm saying is. My buddy Mike go over there wrote a very funny parody of an iconic pop, sit, pop culture sitcom. Uh, which we couldn't use because of the copyrights. So you changed Beaver to Weaver. That's the parody. Of what? What are we parodying? I don't know about anyone else, but I thought it was a parody of a porno flick, not a sitcom. It was about a sitcom when Michael wrote it. Tonight on Here's the Beaver, changing Beaver to Weaver took the punch right out of the double entendre. Because what the world needs now is more beaver double entendre. I can always eat more beaver. How about you, Mary? Are we talking stewed or grilled, James? Oh, I'm a stick! <laughs> now that's funny. It's crass! 
Ah! It proves my point about killing the beaver jokes, doesn't it, Michael? I've got two suggestions. Why are we fighting for this when you won't even fight for yourself? Hold on, let's hear what you're thinking. Billy returns, punches his fist into his mitt and said, That's how the rule defines a triple play. Change the sketch. Uh, as the head turns, make it a parody of soap operas. The way it reads it now, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't need to. It's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of thing. Everyone knows we mean beaver when we say beaver. It's an inside joke. Our audience is smart enough to know what we mean. And the audience deserves smart comedy. Okay, well, what, what if uh, Bucky, because of his teeth, pronounces the, the, the th sound, the D sound? Uh, that instead of that, this instead of no, this? That's hard no. What if Mrs. Weaver is one of those people always speaking to a baby? Oh, I have an aunt like that. She always calls me, oh, wait, one key take. Yeah. Also, no. Uh, wasn't that bad of an idea? We should at least try it. Yeah. You mean now? I mean, we're not taking, so what's it gonna hurt? Why are we trying to save this? We're so far from the original parody, none of this matters. Because we're a team. It's the golden rule, always accept. In journalism, it covers the five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. Just a few lines. Okay, Harry, give Amber her cue. Hello, Mrs. Weaver. May I say you're looking at you? Oh, aren't you a whittle charmer? I could just pinch those whittle cheeks. Yeah, I already felt like Mrs. Robinson. This is creepy. I guess it doesn't work. No surprise there. Oh, everyone take just a step back. Get through this. What's the plan? Pistols at dawn. Sorry. <laughs> my mind my, my, my wandered. Oh! Oh, <laughs> there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Get back in there. What were we talking about? How we're saving your career. You know we can see your hands moving. None of this matters. Didn't anyone notice Lucky never appears in the sketch? You think that was by accident? It wasn't. And the sketch was never about a particular beaver because it was about that particular beaver. Maybe it would help if we dress everyone in beaver costumes and chew on toothpicks. Andy's right. It doesn't matter. You're cutting the sketch? No, that would leave us four and a half minutes short. We can do the talking hand sketch. Brilliant idea. Don't have it go for it. No! no! Well, I tell you. Regarding with Michael's suggestions, we'll reshape the script, the sketch will imprison the people and get back up the sandwiches. Oh, is it is it just sandwiches or is Dark Spring and Pop this time? I think it's just sandwiches and chips. Beer run! Joking! Uh, I'm going to the vending machine. Anybody want something? Okay! <laughs> Comedy Carnival Live Television. Back. CCL TV. 
Bingo. What happened on Comedy Carnival? It wasn't what happened on the show. It was what happened off the show. What happened off the show? He got rejected. I got rejected. Officially or uh, officiously, uh, by the way, I was rejected. By Comedy Carnival Lock. The rejection came on a uh, purple postcard. Someone hand wrote my name and address on one side, and the other side was a pre-printed explanation on the uh, refusal. What reason did it get? I was rejected for religious, ethical, and moral reasons. Holy crap. When did you send them? A sketch for a polo. A family eating dinner calls paramedics when the dad starts choking. The guys who show up advocate euthanasia for five reasons to save the family. It was hilarious. I had a moment. It killed. Pun intended. Well, what one? You said the sketch killed, and I thought something about paramedics that euthanized your own for the pun. If you have to explain the joke, there is no joke. The audience at the community town variety night laughed its collective butt off. The audience laughed because they knew us. They didn't reject it for religious, ethical, and moral reasons. I'm pretty sure that when I Comedy Carnival's S and P's way of telling me that that they weren't going to solicit the non-copyright materials from non-union writers. Either way, uh, you suck. Uh, it's not that funny. The thing isn't funny. It killed at my turkey sound show. Of course it did. Right hand angel, left hand devil. You're the mortal caught between the two, and the audience recognizes it. More importantly, the audience knew you. The report was built in. Uh, building a rapport with a new audience takes time, but then again, what do I know? I suck. What sucks is your attitude. Your writing is good. You need to believe in it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to hit the can and call in. In that order? <laughs> One day I'll be able to do both sign things. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Your buddy is kind of intense. Yeah. Is that your opinion or theirs? Guess it's just me now. Mm. And he's a good guy. We go way back. We're in a cre creative writing class in high school. For the final project, we wrote the first act for a dark comedy telling of, of a failing funeral parlor. We called it, Our Business is Dying. Guy named Mort Grimley hires an ad agency to promote Grimley Funeral Home. It's been in operation for 100 years in a small town. As the community ages and dies and moves away, Grimley experiences a decline in the business. Does the mortician guy talk to the ghosts of the people he's prepping? He starts killing people like the old women and arts make it own lace? He's actually dead? Yeah, nothing like that. Just a straight up farce about death as perceived by a couple of teenagers. Our teacher loved it. We did stage reading, we got laughs, we were hooked. What did you do with the scripts? We turned into a spec script for a half-hour workplace comedy. Stock characters interacting with different guests. Episodic with uh, extended arcs. Morgan Single, the ad agency assigns a perky young single female exec, which causes tension with a young, mousy receptionist. Mort's mother handles the makeup. Guy named Richie drives the hearse. Another guy named Byron. Who delivers flowers? You guys watch more TV than I did. And he has a cousin in the industry that mentored us. Told us to send him a draft, so we, we did. And that was the last we heard of it. In the meantime, eh, there's uh, this little show. Living the dream. That's what this is? Well, it's time to wake up. Where is everyone? I feel like it's been a long five minutes. Maybe they went on a beer run after all. <laughs> Study. 
study project. I'm doing all of this for two credits so I can graduate this semester, do my summer internship at New York so I can study grad work at my NYU. You're doing, you're doing fine. You're not getting it. There's no one here. No cast, no crew, no comedy. I said take five and everyone took off. And now Dr. Gordon's going to come through to the stores any second and see what an awful failure I am as an executive producer at the college campus. The cable access college cameras trying to put Scott with the joke. This is all you. That's not what I think you can relax. She said something about meeting with a former student. You spoke with Dr. Corey? I asked her where you were. Oh, crap. She said she hadn't seen you, but. Also, she wasn't expecting to. She was only here to see the former student. What former student? Uh, she didn't say. What did she say? Uh, what did you say? What would she have to say? Uh, she had plenty to say. Did she have something to say? I went to the office to speak to you. Oh my god, what did she say? Uh, I'm pretty sure it involved beaver goats and some rewrites. Seriously, John? You put an executive decision over our heads? I went to the office to speak to you and Joyce, but you weren't there. Dr. Corey wanted to know I was looking for you. What did she say? I told her I had some concerns. Concerns about what? Uh, beavers and rewrites. Not talking with your hands again? Trust me, next time I think you'll hear them. You said you had concerns. What concerns could you possibly have? <laughs> I really want to discuss this with you in private. Discuss what? I just, I don't want to talk about this right now. Oh, really? Because you apparently had no reservations talking with Dr. Corey. It's different. Why? I wasn't there. Uh, you, it's my show. And it's my step. That's what this is all about. You're both listed as writers in the credits. Are you telling me that you went and complained that your rewrite got a rewrite? It wasn't about the sketch. Whoa, whoa, it wasn't about the writing! Uh, what did you say that could, what could you possibly say that would make you go and do something with that door? She asked me how things were going. And you told her things were going fine. I asked her what she thought of the first two shows. What did she say? She said she didn't need you to drop off the tapes. Drop off the tapes? Does she know that we air on Sundays at 4 and Tuesdays at 10? Did that ever come up in your salad bar meeting? I'm um, speaking of food. Where are Chris and Crumb with those sandwiches? Can we focus on what's important right now? I don't want to have to make up two credits this spring because Dr. Corey thinks that I'm a failure. She didn't say so. That's cool because it wouldn't be true. She'll realize that after she sees the tapes. That's what I told her. You told her what? I told her. She really enjoyed the first two episodes. <laughs> but not the third. What's wrong with the show? We are! I actually didn't say Joyce was having a problem with you. Who did you say that you were having a problem with? I told her. Newsflash! I was having a problem with no one until now. You think I can play? I need to fix this. Where are you going? <sighs> I'm going to see if Dr. Corey is still in the office. Hold on, hold on. Not this time. This time I need to put on my executive producer hat and fix this on my own. You're an idiot. Big on stale, Harry. Just like the last three sketches you pitched. They never got a chance to be heard. That's my point. Before Joyce and even had heard the pitches, people were bad about them. I have been best friends since move-in day our freshman year. <sighs> when Joyce pitched the idea in the television production class last fall, I suggested she bring you on board because she needed someone who was not just a joke writer, but someone who was good at telling a story. The ones you told when you were in the dorm tower common area always had everyone laughing hysterically. Sometimes I couldn't eat dinner because they had me laughing so hard. You're a gifted writer with an ear for dialogue and an eye for detail. I thought Mark Anthony showed up to the barriers. That's a phrase. Here comes the show! You need to understand this, Johnny. It's Joyce's show. Joyce conceived it. Joyce pitched it. Joyce chose the cast and crew. Every decision regarding the campus comedy show is Joyce's. She 
might ask our opinion or seek advice, but ultimately, the decision is hers and hers alone. We may disagree with that decision, but if that's the way Joyce wants it, that's the way it gets done. And why is that? It's Joyce's show. It's Joyce's show. And you can't handle that fact or won't accept that reality. Maybe this kid isn't for you. Are you firing me? It's not up to me, you know why? But it's, it's Joyce's, Joyce's show. show. Johnny, this is the dumbest career choice, and I love everything about it. Big Johnny the play. Yes, I love her. What if during a press conference, the president started talking through his hand and inadvertently reveals secret information? <clears throat> My fellow Americans, what a load of crap. It's the truth. It's crap, and I can prove it. Ha! I got a witness. Grinders, perhaps sponsor of the comp. 